still preaching from biblical examples and admonitions. Father, bless us as we teach the word of the Lord today. In Jesus' name, amen. As you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul starts out with a litany of benefits, special interventions, and miracles that God gave the Jewish people. Special favors. Favor, favors, benefits, miracles, you name it, they received it. And, uh, and yet, verse 5 takes a sharp turn and says, <coughs> excuse me, that with many of them, God was not well pleased. And he began to tell them that the things that happened to them were for our examples. I'll share with you the word that example is a model of some reality that is yet to happen. In other words, it happened to them, but I'm telling you about it to keep it from happening to you. It is said that those of us who are ignorant of history, or if we ignore history, we will repeat history. It seems like to me America is ignorant because we're ignoring the Bible. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm amazed. Y'all not going to like this. I, I'm amazed at the number of sanctified women. And I'm going to show you in the Bible the number of sanctified women whose now new model is Kamala Harris. And uh, the number of sanctified women who are getting the chucks and the pearls. Nothing wrong with chucks. Nothing wrong with pearls. But when a woman who endorsed and performed California's first same-sex marriage can be a model to a sanctified woman, I don't believe you're sanctified. It used to be, to be a model to the sanctified, you had to be sanctified. And I, I don't know what uh, African Americans uh, are excited about, given uh, what she did to us when she had the power to do it. Amen. History doesn't change. Now, now what we can do is we can pretend not to remember and pretend not to know, and pretend it's a new day. But I noticed this, with the, the memory problems and the forgiveness and the move on only applies one way. A Democrat can kill us all and say, I'm sorry, and we'll, be, and we'll go along with it. A Republican can save us all, and we still stay mad. There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. So I'm looking at this, and it's amazing how we're dropping the biblical examples, and we're chasing after things, and God is saying, I'm, I've raised up preachers, and I've given you my word to warn you. Now, Paul says that, uh, that, that with many of them, God was not well pleased. And I know that this is hard to hear, uh, and one of the reasons people ask me, you know, why you seem to be political? The, I'm not into politics. I, I, don't, I don't even like politics. Politics are in the church. See, the devil stepped on our territory. I just refuse to give it to him. That's, if you want to understand me, if I, I'm not, I, I, I wouldn't be a good politician. I wouldn't waste my time running for office. It would be a waste of time. I ain't no way in this world I would sacrifice time that I spend with God to hold a public office. That's for someone else. And thank God for those who do, but that's not my calling. But when you pass laws that affect the kingdom, that affects the nation, that are an affront to God, then every God-filled person has to say something. I want to ask you a question, and, I, and you can do it anonymously. Send me a note. Send me a letter. Email it to me. 
Do it or not, do it any way you want to. I'll keep it private, however you want to. But I invite you to send me one law that President Trump passed in four years that that was against the Bible and God and our Christian teaching. Now, I publicly asked you for, I didn't ask for 10. I asked for one. Well, I couldn't stand the way he talked. He didn't pass that in the law. I didn't like his attitude. He didn't pass that into law. I want to know law. Now, we got attorneys in here. We got medical doctors in here. We have anesthetists in here. We got lawyers. We got some smart folk. We got business owners. We got coaches. We got all these smart people. Send me something. I'm laying it out there. And I'll tell you right now, I won't, it won't be, I won't take it personal because I can't get mad if I ask you. But I'm asking for law. Because in, in the last 10 days, I can send you 10 or 15 of them. And my question to the saints, my question is not a Democrat question, not a Republican question, because you know I'm an independent. My question is now, Where's the outrage? Where are the preachers? Where, oh, where are the voices online? And you know, so many people don't know that when you call someone else stupid, you call them a failure and all that, people also then, they, they begin to look at your life and see what you've done with what's been given to you. See, because if you're going to blast everybody, now you, your stuff better be, it better be right. He said, and we're praying for Sister Rayford. God bless you this morning. Um, um, her brother, uh, they found him yesterday. He passed away. And uh, good to see you this morning. And, um, praying for you and your mom and the family. God's with you. Pa Paul said this in verse 8. And neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell dead, one and 23,000 in one day. Now, Numbers chapter number 25, I want you to turn to it. I'm going to try something. Uh, Numbers 25 is a powerful chapter. But it is even more powerful when you look at it contextually. Because something happened that uh, I, I want to get, I, I, I want you to think about. Sister Murray, I, I want you, I, I got something I want you to think about. Now the Bible says in Numbers 25, and Israel abode in, it's actually pronounced Shittim. Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredoms with the daughters of Moab. All right, they're in Shittim. They're not in Moab at this point. They've left Moab. All right? They're uh, actually 400 miles away from Moab. But in Shittim, the staging place to conquer Jericho, to conquer the land of Canaan, Shittim. The daughters of the Moabites, Israel's enemy, enemy nation of Israel, Moab, on the eastern side, of, uh, I'm going to say the Jordan, but the Jordan doesn't extend down to Moab. It's more um, eastern side, midway, and down, southeastern side 
of the Dead Sea, Moab. All right? You see, uh, Shatim is, if, as you can see on the screen there, is on the east side of the Jordan. The plains of Moab, we see how it comes up, but they're getting ready to go into Jericho. Are you following? Now, you see Baal Peor, the mountains of, that's the mountainous region, and you see Mount Nebo, and it's, it, all this will come into play, but you see where Baal is and all that. All right? Now, let, let, I want let, let's to let's, show you this now. They began to commit whoredoms with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices that they hear are the daughters of Moab. Call the people. That's a technical term. <clears throat> the Jewish people. Unto the sacrifices of their God. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. They began to worship Chemosh, the god of war, the god of the Moabites. Um, they began to mix the worship of, of uh, Chemosh, and, uh, and you're going to see the worshiping of Baal. Remember I told you last Sunday there's a name for the God of all of our faiths. A man prayed the other day in the name of the God of our collective faiths. I don't know what that preacher's name is. I don't want nobody to tell me that preacher's name. He don't know Jesus' name. I don't want to know his name. What a worthless prayer. I ought to be shot. Should have fired him for that. I can't say shot no more because people take that literally. <laughs> they may... Label me a domestic terrorist. <laughs> this is a messed up time we're living in now. And uh, 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 so, now look at this. So Israel, verse 3 says, And Israel joined herself unto Baal of Mount Peor. I just showed you Mount Peor. Baal of Peor. That was in the mountainous regions. Now, they had left Mount Peor, and they were down in the plains of Shittim. Are you following me? So, and when they joined Baal, which includes Chemosh, Baal is the chief god of the Canaanite deities. They, they had a whole bunch of them. But Baal uh, is the chief god of their collective faith. So I guess that guy was praying to Baal. I'm going to talk about him um, until the Lord just take him out of my mind. I hope I talk about it until four years from now, until they, you know, we have another election. That was a disgrace. That was an affront to all Christians. It was an embarrassment to all black preachers. All of us ought to be angry. All, all, we ought to be ashamed. You get on the world stage and you do that to God yes, with a cross on. And they, all them clowns shaking his hand and everybody's just congratulating. What a wonderful prayer. It was worthless. All prayers that are not prayed in the name of Jesus are worthless. He may as well have said star light, star bright. Give me what I wish tonight. I wish I would. I, whatever. It was a waste of time. I want, I want to be on record. Amen. I want to put it on out there where everybody will know where I I, how embarrassed I was. A Muslim wouldn't have done it. No, sir. And then what is this thing with people swearing on the Bible, but they don't put their hand on the Bible? Are you afraid to touch the Bible? You got, that's, I'm praying that God give you discernment because you need to know Satanism when you see it. So when there's so many people talk about who their Lord is. Satan is referred to as Lord. 
He's the dark Lord. That's why the name Jesus is so important. Because it, it alerts people as to who you're actually talking to and talking about. You can call anybody Lord. Satan is the God of this world. You can call, so you can call anybody God. But if you're talking about the true and living God, there is an identity marker. There is something that you can say that distinguishes him from everybody else. And that is the name Jesus. See, you can't fake that. And you know what people in, in Satan's kingdom won't do? They won't fake Jesus. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, yeah, but that, that Catholic priest, he incorporated scripture in his prayer. Doesn't make any difference. Jesus, the devil told Jesus, took him up to the pinnacle of the temple and said, jump off the pinnacle for it is written. The devil quoted scripture. The devil quoted scripture. It is written that he has given his angels charge over thee to take care of you uh, uh, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now that is actually in the Bible. So, so Satan can quote scripture. See, that's why I'm asking God to give you discernment. Give you young people some discernment so you won't be so easily confused. I don't get all this confusion. Discernment is needed because Satan is a scripture quoter and he's a miracle worker. All miracles don't come from God. Bible talks about how the devil's going to uh, do, uh, provide all kinds of deceivable signs and wonders. It's to trick you. Your safeguard is your knowledge of the Bible and you're embracing the name of Jesus and you hold everything against that name. And I don't care who it is, if, the, if Jesus is not included, then Jesus is not in it. Now, you ain't going to hear nobody else, no other preacher in Raleigh, probably tell you what I just told you. Because I don't know what's happening to uh, 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 a lot of these preachers. But now look at this. I, let me get to this. Because I've I got a, uh, John, i got a lot of ground to cover. Now watch this. It says... And uh, verse 3, the B clause teaches that God, now I'm going to tell you something. Ladies of a certain age can relate to this. And people who have been crossed one time too many can relate to what I'm getting ready to say. It says, and the anger of the Lord was kindled. That is, God had a hot flash. God, the one writer said it was a flashpoint where God turned red and the anger came on sudden. What happened was an affront to God. It's an affront to God when a preacher pray in the name of the collective faith. It's an affront to God. When you won't put your hand on the Bible as you swear on it. It's an affront to God as we sign wickedness in the law. And the saints model themselves after those who are leading us in that direction. And when God has a flashpoint, people die. Things happen. Y'all putting your faith in these vaccines. Look. Uh, we better put our faith in holy living. Because a lot of this stuff is demonic. Now, let me stop right here for a moment to try to give you something. I want, I want this to make sense. What we're looking at is a stark contrast to the prophecies that were uttered by Balaam. 
Chapter 25 of, of, of Numbers. Bear with me on this one, okay? It, it described the unfaithfulness of Israel to God. Now, you know that. But it is, in its context, it is Israel's unfaithfulness to God in the context of God's unwavering faithfulness to them. That's the context. See, it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't just what they did. God's flashpoint came when they did it. Because God went out of his way, if you will, to be faithful to them. And it didn't take much for them to be unfaithful to him. I'm satisfied with Jesus. But the question is, is he satisfied with me? See, he was faithful to them. I mean, he would not go along at all with multiple attempts to get God to be unfaithful to them. And it didn't take anything but a few Moabite women to get Israel to be unfaithful to him and it made God mad God has been faithful to America the worst tsunamis don't happen here they haven't the worst earthquakes don't happen here we read about them the majority of the plane crashes on, on, on our US continent on our, our soil Think of all the things that you see happen in the world that do not happen here. We've never had a war other than the Civil War here in the continental U.S. Think about all the things that have not happened here. And think about the lifestyle that God has given us here. America's poor are the richest poor in the world. In America, you can be poor and have a flat screen in every room. Poor and overweight. Poor with fake nails, fake hair, and still live below the poverty line. Poor. Poor and got all the toys for Christmas. Poor. Poor and have problems that come from eating too much. Now, most of the world's poor don't have di diabetes and overweight problems. We're so blessed over here that they got a show called My 600 Pound Life. All the 600 pounders are Americans. In other countries, it ain't enough food. I, I did business with a lady who moved here from uh, Yugoslavia. And she said to me with her Yugoslavian accent, she said, when I came to America, uh, and, and by the way, uh, she came from Yugoslavia. She couldn't even speak the language, and now she runs her own business. So you can imagine, you know, how she feel about folk who've been born here and claim they can't make it. Okay, so uh, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me go on before I make you all angrier, because I know what you're saying. This is too much for 8 a.m. She said, the first thing that I noticed about Americans, America, was the portion size. When you go to the restaurants to eat, how much food was on each plate? So in our country, you don't, people don't eat that much. They don't serve that much food on each plate. Ain't no supersize me. Our regular size is supersize for other areas around the world. You sitting there 
order the number three. That you want me to supersize it? Yeah, supersize it. Now, now, you, now you got enough grease in you to kill you. Drive down the road, halfway falling on your clothes. Like, Thank you, Jesus. We're blessed. In chapters 22 through 24, we see how God was faithful to Israel and blessed them when Balak, king of the Moabites, king of Moab, wanted God to curse them. I mean, Balak really wanted Israel cursed. Chapter 22, you got your Bibles? Okay, you don't show up here without your Bible. Wrong church. You know, I'm getting letters and, and, and a correspondence all over the world, all over the country, of people thanking me for preaching the Bible. They said, we really appreciate that you read the Bible when you preach, and you stick with it when you preach. So a lot of preachers read the Bible, and they're opening, you know, and don't go back to it no more. And people are appreciating reading the Scripture. The scripture. So don't you all get bored with the Scriptures. Other folk are glad that, that, to, to be in the, uh, We have a lady uh, who have left her church, and she lives in Pennsylvania, and she's, she's going to join up a room. She wrote her pastor a letter, sent me a copy of it. Says, I have I found me a church where they preach the Bible. <laughs> Seriously, that's what she said. And said, it's online, but they're preaching the Bible. And I want to hear the Bible. And I thank the Lord for you, pastor. I wish you well. And I wish my church well. I love my church. But I want the Bible. Ain't that something? Are you going to take them in? Sure as a word. My name is Patrick Wooden, and I appreciate them appreciating the Bible. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side of the Jordan by Jericho. And one of the things that you have to keep in mind, depending upon what map they show you, uh, land boundaries change. They fluctuated because if you conquer the land, it may move it down lower. If you haven't, it may be high. So, so here they are. They're in the plains of uh, Jericho on the uh, east side of Jordan. And Balak, are you following me? The son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And the reason... What Israel did to the Amorites stunned Balak. So it's because Zippor was the king when uh, Shion took the land from him. So the Amorites had conquered um, uh, in Zippor's day, the Amorites had conquered the Moabites. And Israel conquered the Moabites. So based on what Israel did to the Moabites, it really scared uh, Balak because uh, the Amorites had defeated them. So if Israel defeated the Amorites, but the Amorites defeated the Moabites, now here comes the uh, the Israelites, are you following? And the Moabite says, if they defeated the people who defeated us, we have no chance of defeating them. See, if, ah, uh, praise the Lord, some little guy beat up John, And John had already beat me up. Now that fella is coming toward me. Oh, I'm scared to death. Because John beat me. But he beat John. Now he's coming toward me. If John couldn't beat him, but John beat me, 
What chance do I have? So I need help. That's, that's, that's what's going on. So uh, 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 Balak said, my God, when my daddy was in, they defeated us. This is, this is in, you can read all this. Chapter 21, verse 26 says, And Hishbon was the city of Shion, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and taken his land out of his hand. So you see where the Amorites had defeated the Moabites, but Israel defeated the Amorites. Now they are approaching the Moabites. And uh, Balak says, oh Lord. And Moab, look at this, verse 3, was so afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Now, what the Moabites didn't realize was the children of Israel was no threat to them. All the children of Israel wanted to do is just pass through on their way somewhere else. But they saw their, their coming as a, an aggression of war. And they did not believe that they could defeat them for the reasons that I just gave you. So they are shocked. And, and verse 4 says, And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that, were, that are around us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. Are you following me? And so I'll tell you what he did. Verse 5 says, He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, Here's a new man being introduced. The son of Beor to Pithor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. And they abide over against us. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people. So we need you to travel. They're about 400 miles from us. We need you to travel about 400 miles. And uh, Balaam had a reputation for whomever he cursed, they went down. So Balak felt that if I could just get Balaam to pronounce a curse on these people, it greatly increases our chances of defeating them. So he says, I need you to come and uh, curse this people. Are you following me? And uh, uh, the, 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 to, to curse an enemy was a common practice during that time. And Balaam had a reputation for being the best. So he says, I pray you, uh, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Pre-adventure, I shall prevail. Uh, perhaps I will prevail uh, that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I what? I know that he whom thou blesses is blessed. And he whom thou curses is cursed. So if you bless these people, they're going to be blessed. God will go along with you. If you curse them, they will be cursed. God will go along with you. This is what Balak believed. So he sent, notice what the text says, he sent, verse 5, messengers to get him. 
Verse 7, And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed, look at this, with the rewards of divination in their hand. This is one of the reasons why I don't believe that when you invite a preacher to come and preach at your church, that they should give you a contract. That is the doctrine of Balaam. Say, yeah, I'll come, but you got to guarantee me a certain amount of money. Stay home, Balaam. You ain't coming here. Now, God said, go out in the vineyard and work, and what is right, I will pay you. Now, if I got to promise you this, that, and a third to get you to come, stay home. That's Balaam. Say amen. Say, with the rewards of, the, the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came to Balaam. And spake unto him the words of Balak. Said the king said, come and curse this people. And we are going to pay you. And he said unto them, lodge here this night. And I will bring you word again. As the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. So Balaam said, uh, stay here, and God, uh, I'll bring you back word. Notice what the word, notice how it's written here. The Bible is so uh, awesome. The Bible is awesome. Notice he says in verse 8 and the second clause, he says, as the Lord shall speak to me. So he says, I'm going to go and seek Jehovah. See, so it's, it's in all caps. See, so he says, and God came to Balaam and, and said, uh, what men are these with thee? Now, you know, God already knew. And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, have sent unto me, saying, behold, there is a people that came out of Egypt, their face covered the earth, and now Curse me them. Perhaps I preadventure, perhaps I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. Look at God's faithfulness. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Now, keep in mind, Israel don't know that any of this is going on. They're just in camp. They don't know that this spiritual warfare is taking place. See, you, don't, you never know what's going on. All you know is what you see. That's why we got to let the Bible be our guide. See, that's why I'm praying for saints to get discernment. There are people who have a vested interest in separating this nation from God. There's a reason why they are in love with the transgender. There's a reason why they're in love with wickedness. Wait till all this pedophilia that's going on right now. That's in Congress. That is in the Senate. That is in the halls of power. Wait till it all comes out. Child sacrifice. And, and, and abortion is tied into this. And you got a bunch of, a bunch of uh, depopulationists. I told someone just the other day, I texted a, pre a preacher. I said, why would you trust a depopulationist? We're going to get Tony Fauci and let T F Fauci talk to us. A backslidden Catholic. I wouldn't trust that little man no further than I can send him. I don't trust any depopulationist. Black folk ought to, really ought not to trust them because we're on the menu. Yes. When they start talking about it, well, the first thing they do when the world, when they start having conversations about the world being overpopulated, the next thing that comes out of their mouth is Africa. Yes. And they have a vested interest in trying to get rid of African Americans. And who is the one preacher who have been telling you for years that what this open borders people is all about, it's about our replacement. Yeah. 
I have said it to you a thousand times. Now, I know what you say amongst yourself. Hey, we black folk, we got to stick together. I hear what pastor's saying, but you can say what you want. But when it comes to pass, I'm here to tell you, God is not going to hear your prayers. Because you cannot pray one way. You cannot. There is a spiritual principle. You cannot pray one way and vote another. The Bible said that the double-minded man is unstable in all of his way. And then I heard him say, and let not that man think he will receive anything from the Lord. Now that's what James said. Now what you gonna do with that? What you gonna do with that? I didn't, I didn't write it, I, I didn't write it. I'm just called to preach it. And I'm glad that I can preach it with or without your amen. Let me tell you, tell you something preachers. Don't get too high on being complimented. That just means they like that sermon that day. Same one who may compliment you and call you the greatest preacher in the world on one service may be in a total different mood the next time you see him. So you have to be where you say what God says and let the chips fall where they may. You can't be motivated by the rewards of divination. My last name is Wooden, not Balaam. And I heard him. God said, don't do it. And Balaam rose up early in the morning and said to the princes, uh, said unto the princes of Balaam. Look at this. Get you into your land. Go home. For the Lord refused. Jehovah refused to give me leave to go with you. So they upped the ante. And the princes of Moab uh, rose up, went to Balak, and said, Balaam refused to come with us. And Balak sent yet princes again. But he went up higher. He sent another delegation more honorable than they. So he, he went uh, to his high-ranking officials and his captain. And they came to Balaam, and they said unto him, uh, uh, Thus saith uh, Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming to me. For I will promote thee unto every great honor. I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, oh, I pray thee, curse me this people. I will promote you. I will give you whatever you want. Name it. Claim it. It is yours for the asking. Just come and curse this people. Woo! See, see, you see where this is why you have to divorce yourself from promotion, from moving up the ladder. You know, that's one of the things wrong with our church. You know, you have to work your way up the ladder in this church. And that's why people will cut each other's throats, will betray anybody, will stab each other in the back, because you're trying to work your way up the ladder. God ain't never called anybody to work their way up the ladder. I'm not called to work my way up the ladder. I'm called to preach the gospel. And if God wants to promote me and open a door, God will do it. And if God don't, I'm satisfied. Right where I am. Because if the devil gets you to chasing that stuff, you, you, now you know what? You'll get it. Now, there may be a whole lot of dead bodies. You know, kill all your friends. You know, cut everybody's throat. Doesn't matter who they were to you spiritually. You know, cut. Now, you got the promotion, but you lost your anointing. You're sitting up there on the general board with 12 members in your church, and you, and you, but you have no power. Can't cast out a coal, but you got that promotion. The anointing ought to mean more to you. Can, can I get a witness? Oh, I should have started it today in service at seven. I, there's a lot God I have to say to you. And the Bible says this. Look at this. It said, we, 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 we're going to give you what you want. And Balaam, Balaam preachers gave the wrong answer. He gave the wrong answer. See, Balaam was not a The Bible speaks of the madness of Balaam. He gave the wrong answer. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, if Balaam, well, he gave the wrong answer, the right answer at first, but he, I want, well, I'll show you what I mean. 
Now, he says all the right things here. If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. That, that sounds good, don't it? That is so, that, I mean, that's bro, petty. That, that's, that's it. But watch what he does. Now, therefore, I pray you tarry here this night that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. Well, now God had just told you. See, that's, see, that's one of the, the dynamics of how the spiritual world works. When God gives you an answer, you don't, keep, you don't keep going back. Because eventually, you know what God will do? He will acquiesce and give you what you want. But you'll get what you wanted, but you'll lose what you had. Now, if the Lord didn't spoke to you, God said, stay put. Why are you going talking to 50 other folk about a move you're thinking about making when God said stay put? Why are you having a tenth conversation when God says not now? Well, God, I won't know when. God said, you don't, you don't get back with me. I'll get back with you. I'll open the door. Balaam goes to see he gets back to God. And this shows where his heart was. This shows that he wanted what they were offering to him. He wanted it. And God came to Balaam. Remember, Paul says, these things were written for our examples that we should not lust after evil things. See, an evil thing is even a good thing that we acquired at the expense of our relationship with God. See, so that good thing becomes an evil thing if you had to disobey God to get that thing. So that's what lets you know whether or not. See, when we, say, when we say that we should not lust after evil things, the first thing that comes to our minds is adultery and fornication. No, no, no. The promotion can be an evil thing. If you, if you got to get it at the expense of your relationship with God. If God done told you, praise the Lord, not now, whatever, if the Lord has spoken to you and it fits in every situation, but you just want what you want, you are lusting after an evil thing. He went, look at my time, look at my time. He went, look at this, and God came to Balaam at night and said unto him, now remember, these things were written for our example. They happened and they were written. So you learn a whole lot if you just read the Bible. You learn how God works. So God came to him and said unto him, If the men call, come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, thou shall not do. Now you, you see, you see how God's doing? Now, he had already told him not to go. So there's no point in coming back. But this time, since he went back anyway, uh, 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 Evangelist Weinberg, Wilborn, God says, all right, go with him. But say what I tell you to say. Amen. See, and, and, and that, that was not God's best. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. what you want from God is God's best. See, this was God's second best. God's best was don't go with him. But you didn't settle with God's best. You didn't want God's best. So now you're having to walk in God's second best. God's second best is never as good as God's best. So, you ought to write that down. That'll preach. Go somewhere and preach that. God's second best. God's second best will get you in trouble with a dumb donkey. And our uh, Balaam rose up early in the morning and settled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And look at this. Flashpoint. Here it is again. Verse 22. And the anger of, was kind, and God's anger was kindled. Why? You're learning something about God. Because he went. 
So God is never happy with us obeying God's second best. God told him to go. You know why he told him to go? Because he knew he wanted to go. But then was angry because he went. This is why we got to let God work on our heart to the intent that we do not lust after evil things. See, there's a difference between we practice self-denial, but the Bible really doesn't teach self-denial. The Bible teaches that we deny ourselves. It's a big difference. Self-denial is you have the craving, but you learn how to live with it and ignore it. Still got it. Praise the Lord. To deny yourself is to let the craving go itself. Lose the whole thing. Let God take that whole thing away. Now you're free from it altogether. See, because if you have it, but you're not acting on it, you still ain't free from it. It, it can still get you. The moment you get weak, you're right back in it. But if you let God take that away from you, when God took Pork away from me. Pork is no temptation to me. My family laugh at me. We go anywhere. They can bring the prettiest pork chop and uh, and uh, this store Perry's. You want you want some good pork? Uh, you want to see a beautiful pork chop? Perry's got the prettiest one in the world. Bring that thing to your plate, and oh, it just looks so good. And my big son-in-law, him and the crystal, crystal get her one. They, and they just oh, Dad, look at this, and it's. Oh, I look at it, but it's not a temptation. I seen a time, though, where I would have said to them, uh, is that so-and-so coming in? They look back and say, well, I grabbed the pork chop. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not over it. But when the Lord took that from me, I, I, I let that go. It changed everything. It's not a temptation. God got angry with it. Look at my time. God got angry with him because he went. Do you see that? And the anger of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. God's second best. Now, now the preacher has God against him. That's why some of these works never got off the ground. They ain't going to never get anywhere. Out there in left field, didn't leave right, didn't do right, didn't go right. That's why it hadn't prospered, hand blessed. You know, it ain't that I'm against them. I don't even talk about it. God is against them because they didn't do it right. Go on and take that woman's husband. Go on and take him. But if you take him, you, you, go, you might get him. He may marry you. But God is against him. But we just love you. Love ain't enough. God so you got to let that go. God is it. And if God is against you, oh, where's Geiger? Geiger's my guy. I love riding with God. Where's Geiger? We ride together. He's a bad man. I almost don't like to see him come. Tough guy. This guy, this guy's a machine. But he and I both, one of the things we struggle with when we ride is headwinds. And the reason I struggle so, and I tell I said, Geiger, man, I didn't know these headwinds were going to be blowing. When that wind is blowing against you, in my mind, it, it scrambles my philosophy because I feel like when I'm flowing with the wind that I got God at my back. But if I'm going against the wind, I feel, I feel like God is against me. Now I got to try to ride and set my mind right because I feel like I, I got to get back to the starting point but I feel like I'm riding against God. When God is against you, you're discombobulated. When God is against you, see, you don't have peace of mind. God was against him. This is good preaching. It's good preaching. And uh, look at this. And uh, the angel of the Lord uh, stood in the way. Look at this. For an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, his donkey, and two of his servants was with him. Now look at that, got them in trouble. They all out the will of the Lord. <laughs> Following leadership. 
And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And make the long story short, the donkey went astray three times. Three times. And each time he acted up, the prophet hit him. The ass could see what the preacher couldn't. Look at all these blind saints today. Y'all trying to be like Kamala. Chucks and pearls. And you don't even see the angel standing there with his sword drawn. Say, I'm going to cut your head off because you are celebrating wickedness. Talking about at least, at least we got peace now. There's no peace. There's no peace while you're signing wickedness into law. There's no peace. We're in trouble. And somebody got to say it. And we're in trouble that if we're not careful, prayer won't get us out of because we voted for it. Preach wouldn't. Preach. We asked for it. And you know what God did? He gave it to us. But when he gave it to us, all of a sudden now, he's the adversary. I'm a seer. I told you, that, that's my gift. I'm a seer. God shows me things. And you know why I made a deal with God early on? I said, God, I know it's you if I can confirm it in your word. And you have to admit, I'm preaching Bible contextually. The third time, the Bible teaches that the dumb ass spoke to him and said to him, I've always been loyal to you. I've never misbehaved you. Why have you hit me these three times? The dumb ass said, I did this because there's an angel standing there. You can't see it. But there's an angel standing there to take your head off, you dumb, blind prophet. And the Bible teaches in verse 31, and the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and we saw the angel standing in the way, his sword drawn in his hands. God opened our eyes. He bowed down. He became a worshiping servant. He bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, you know, and now you know angel of the Lord is a technical term, right? You know the angel of the Lord is a technical term. The angel of the Lord is a divine manifestation of Jesus Christ. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee. See, that, that, that guy, that's, that's the headwinds. <laughs> Blowing against you. I went out. To withstand thee. Do you see that? Because thy way is perverted before me. America! We perverted our ways before the Lord, and we're celebrating perversion. I have preachers who argue with me. They argue for the right of the transgender to be over a ranking member of Health and Human Services. And their argument is, don't you think they should have, have the right to earn a living? Not in that position. It's, it's perverted. Right now is wrong. And wrong is right. It's perverted. People who preach, like my wife said the other night, we're called old school. I'm not old school. Now don't make that mistake, call me that. I'm not old school. I'm right. No, don't call me old. I pass as an old school preacher. No, I'm not old school. I don't, don't, don't relegate me to the past. I'm not some relic of the past. I am God's voice. I'm one of God's men. My words, my words live in the future. 
And I tell you years ahead of time what shall be. And it have come to pass as I have said. How is that old school? How can your prophecies come to pass and then you, they call you old school? I ain't old school. I'm more current than tomorrow morning's newspaper because that's what prophecy is. Some of these prophets need to uh, prophesy. He says, man, I was against you. I got to stop. I wanna, what I want to show you. So I got to pick it up. I have a hard stop on uh, eight. Look at how God fought to be loyal to them. He sent an angel. He sent his word. He even, he even participated in a humiliating exercise. He had multiple conversations with a man that he had already told the man what his position was. And yet God entertained it. God put up with it. Why did the Lord do it? Did he do it because he was so in love with Balaam? No, God did it because he was so committed to his people. And all it took for his people to quickly turn their back on him were women. When they tried to employ witchcraft and divination to curse God's people, God said, I won't go along with it. That's right. And I'm going to show you the next time. The same Balaam, same Balak said, you know what? Wonder what I couldn't accomplish through divination and through witchcraft. I'll accomplish through immorality. Russia will never beat America. China can never beat America. No nation can ever bring America down. But I'll tell you who will beat America. I'll tell you who is defeating America. America is. They couldn't curse God's people. But they got the people to turn on God. See, God, God never turned on them. They turned on him. And this is why God hit a flashpoint. This is why the anger of the Lord. God turned red with anger because God knew how hard they worked to get God to be unfaithful to them versus how little it took for them to be unfaithful to God. Let us stand. Everybody stand. Father, in Jesus' name, we, we come before you. We come before you, Lord. First of all, we thank you for this, the, the, these passages, these teachings, this word, these examples, this reality that took place you're giving us warnings. You're warning our nation. You're warning our church. You're speaking to us as individuals. God, we do not put ourselves above this word. We do not assume it's for someone else. God, you're speaking to me. God, you're speaking to us. God, you're speaking to America. God, you're speaking to the world. Father, we just recommit to you. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Strengthen us where we're weak. And build us where we're torn down. In the name of Jesus, we repent before you right now. And oh God, we repent on behalf of an ungrateful nation. In the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. Open the eyes of the church. Open the eyes of the saints. Let them, oh God, still revere women like they used to. Godly women. Godly women. Godly women. Not witches. People who have sold their souls. Oh God, open our eyes. In Jesus' name, amen.
clap your hands for Jesus and give God the praise. I feel the anointing of the Lord like I've never felt him before. My God today, my God today.